It's always an exciting time when you see your first sub-exposure on an object you've never photographed before. It's the middle of July here in the Northern Hemisphere, which means that summer is now in full swing. There's a vast plethora of nebulae targets up in the night sky. And tonight I'm going to be going after a Messier object that I've never had the chance to photograph until now. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I collect my first photons on Messier 8, also known as the Lagoon Nebula. My name is Kwesi Aqua, and welcome to the Astro Park. Messier 8, also known as the Lagoon Nebula, is an emission nebula as well as a H2 star forming region, located in the constellation of Sagittarius at a distance of 4,100 light years away from Earth. It was discovered by Giovanni Hodierna in 1654 and is one of only two star-forming nebulae faintly visible to the eye from mid-northern latitudes. The nebula contains a number of Bach globules, which are dark, collapsing clouds of protostellar material. It also includes a funnel-like structure caused by a hot O-type star that emanates ultraviolet light heating and ionizing gases on the surface of the nebula. So to shoot the Lagoon Nebula, I wanted to use a telescope that has a medium focal length so I could get a little bit of an up-close view. So for tonight's imaging session, I'll be using the Orion Eon 104EDX2 a triplet apochromatic refractor telescope. I'll also be using for imaging the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro, a one-shot color CMOS camera. And this will all be sitting on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And for emission nebulae targets, they can be shot either in broadband or narrowband and personally I tend to prefer the broadband style for the Lagoon Nebula so I'll be using the Optolong L-Pro broadband light pollution filter to get those natural colors as well as keep the light pollution at bay. So with all that being said let's go outside take a walk in the park and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Lagoon Nebula. Okay, everybody, so I gotta keep my voice down a little bit because there's a lot of people 
out tonight for some strange reason. But um, yeah, so I was able to complete my polar alignment and star alignment. So I'm in APT right now and I'm doing my PhD calibration. So right now you're seeing a live three second loop of the Lagoon Nebula. So I uh, centered the frame inside of the open star cluster that's within the Lagoon Nebula. I believe it's NGC 6230. So I centered it there. And now I'm waiting for the calibration for PhD to complete. And then once that's done, I'll do my imaging plan. So tonight's plan, I'm going to do as many three minute exposures as I can get tonight. I got off to a little bit of a late start because there were some clouds that came in earlier. So I had to wait for those to dissipate. So it's around 1150 right now. So if I can get at least maybe two hours tonight, maybe more, I think that'd be a, a really good image to show for the end of this video. So I believe the PhD state is completed now. So let's go ahead and do the imaging test plan. So I'll use the one that I did for my last session. Let me just double check everything here. So we'll start with, uh, we'll do three minute exposures and I'll do 20 for it to start off with. That way I can focus after every hour. So 20 by 180. Update current. And that looks good. So yeah, PhD completed its calibration. So we can go ahead and start the imaging plan. It's always annoying when these Windows update stains start popping up, but we can ignore that for now. So let me turn off the live view. And let's get this party started. Exposure started. All right, so we'll get the first batch of 20 exposures at three minutes each and see how it turns out. Hey everybody, so I just want to give you a quick update. Uh, it's about 1.40 right now in the morning and I just completed my first batch of 20 exposures at three minutes each. And I slewed over to the star Altair in the summer triangle to do a focus routine. Then I came back to the Lagoon Nebula to do another round of 20 exposures of three minutes. So. I wanted to quickly talk about the importance of image planning. You want to make sure that the object that you're trying to photograph or observe is available for your location as well as your time. So for example, if you're trying to photograph the Orion Nebula and it's the middle of July right now, unfortunately you're going to be a little bit disappointed because as far as we know in the Northern Hemisphere, the Orion Nebula only shows up in the late fall into early winter. So you wanna make sure that it's available for your time as well as your location. And a great resource that I use for image planning is a website called Telescopius. You just plug in your location and it will give you a vast variety of different objects that you can either observe or photograph and it also shows the time at its highest point in the sky as well. And one of the cool features of this site is that it has a telescope simulator. So you can plug in the specifications for your telescope and your camera, 
and it will provide an approximate field of view so that you can use that to help frame your object better, which is really nice. And also people share their astrophotography there as well. And I've seen a bunch of fantastic images from astrophotographers all across the world. So if you're looking for a great resource to help with your image planning, I would recommend using Telescopius. And I have a profile there as well where I share my astrophotography. So if you're interested in checking out what I have, I've placed a link to my profile in the description box down below. Hey guys, so unfortunately I had to cut my imaging session a little bit short tonight. It's about 2.40 a.m. right now and the Lagoon Nebula dove behind some trees. So I was only able to get about, I'd say an hour and some change in integration time, but I won't know the exact number for sure until I go home and sort through all the data. So it's been a pretty tough night. I mean, we had some intermittent clouds and the transparency tonight wasn't too great. And the overall weather in Maryland for the last few weeks has been completely abysmal in terms of clear skies. This was the first clear night I've had in several weeks. And, you know, even though the transparency was bad and we had some intermittent clouds, in this hobby, you just have to take what you, what you can get. So I'll have to see what kind of image I'll be able to pull out of this data. But apart from that, I had a lot of fun shooting my first time for the Lagoon Nebula, so that was very exciting. So all that's left is to shoot my calibration frames, and that'll be a wrap for me. So thank you for watching Astro Park, and please enjoy the image of the Lagoon Nebula at the end of this video. And until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.